Welcome to Woman on Her Path. Every woman has her own unique path. But what does that mean? How does said woman know what her path is? How does she find the courage to follow her path? I am your host, Tiffany Cooper. I am a mother, energy worker, community herbalist, and bhakti yogi. By sharing my experiences and insights on my path, I hope to inspire and encourage you on yours. When we follow our path, we find the answers we need in life. Let's find answers together and create a better world for ourselves and those around us. Happy Friday, woman. It is so good to be here with you again for another episode of Woman on Her Path. I am so grateful to get to share this time with you. I am especially grateful for the feedback and you letting me know that what I have been sharing is helpful. I also welcome any thoughts about what else you would like to hear on the podcast, so don't be shy. Feel free to reach out to me at womanonherpath at gmail.com. So, how have you been since we last connected? Whether you are a monthly listener on one of the many platforms this podcast appears, or you listen on a weekly basis as a patron on my Patreon page, I am sure that you have experienced lots of change since we last connected. We are living in a time of great transition and shedding, lots of releasing of past energy and stepping into our new energy which is sometimes very challenging. It can be nerve-wracking to become a new person. (laughs) We women are expert at it, though we don't really think of it that way. We go from being girls to young women, for some to mothers, on to being liberated women with less responsibility, to becoming older women with deeper wisdom. All of those stages of life require immense change in our lives. They are times when we have to reinvent ourselves. We become a new, more informed version of ourselves. Many times we reflect that in a change of hairstyle or the way we dress. We want to show the world that we are different. Without words, we say, this is who I am now. It's interesting to see others take notice and react or how new people treat us differently than those who knew the old version of us best. When we see ourselves in a different light, we present that to the world and the world responds. Until we feel comfortable in our new selves, it can give us a bit of anxiety. Will people like the new me, with new hair, new outfits, or a new way of being in the world? (laughs) We just have to have faith in who we have become, and eventually others will get used to it. And perhaps there will be some that will never accept it. And if we can't make our relationships work with them, it's okay to let them go. It's normal to grow out of certain connections or relationships. We all grow and change. Otherwise, we become stagnant and eventually fade away. Not everyone will accept or is willing to grow and change with us. 
Then we have to make decisions. Are we going to put in the work to make our relationships fit into our new lives? Or are we just going to move forward while being thankful for the experience and lessons that relationship gave us and leave it in the past? Of course, that does not only apply to romantic relationships, but it does remind me of something that I have had a lot of clients asking about lately. Finding a partner or dating. Dating. (laughs) Such a complicated issue these days. Actually, dating is practically non-existent now. Thanks to companies figuring out that they can make big money by turning it into an industry of sorts, it has become a convoluted exercise to date. Dating apps have created a way to use other people for entertainment while masquerading as dating. On an app, we are presented with hundreds of photos and profiles of prospective partners, yes, in quotation marks, giving us the illusion that we have loads of options. The truth is hardly any of them are options because we would not click with the vast majority of them, even if we had some miraculous chance to meet them all. Another factor is that most people create profiles based on what they think others want to hear rather than who they really are. Essentially, profiles aren't even real. Some people even include old photos of themselves when they were younger and shinier, not giving an honest representation of themselves, again, making them not real. Much like a casino, apps are like a game where the odds are stacked against us. The only true winner is the house, or app developers and those involved in the running of apps. Of course, there are many people who meet potential partners on apps, but the vast majority of them are not potential partners at all. They are often people with different expectations, masked by a superficial platform that gives the illusion that the playing field is level. I'm not even going to get into the algorithms of these apps and how they work to curate who we get to see or interact with. Some people use apps to find sexual partners, while others are looking for love. Some want commitments, while others are looking for something casual. Some people spend uncountable hours and irretrievable energy trying to find someone on an app, only to be disappointed when it never happens. Then they wonder, what is wrong with them, when it's really the system that is faulty? Dating apps teach poor social habits, such as thinking of other people as disposable. After all, we can choose as many as we want and just swipe past the ones we have no interest in. Real dating takes some stretching and effort. We have to present ourselves, be social, and talk to people when we date for real. We have to interact with them and see what it feels like to be in their presence. It's not just about picking a photo, reading a too short or made up profile, and sending a message which can be ignored or from which they can string us along for weeks on end. When we're face-to-face with someone, actually speaking with them and not just texting, it is obvious how they feel. It is much harder to carry on a farce. 
And if they do, it ends much quicker. More and more stories are coming out about men who use dating apps to find victims for rape or abuse, or to find as many women as possible to date at the same time. So what is the real benefit for women in participating in dating app culture? Just recently, I had a conversation with a young woman about how dating has changed and how society continues to convolute romantic partnership. Now, in modern times, there has always been some confusion about romantic relationships, but it seems we have come to a juncture where things are bordering on the absurd. Things like hookup culture in which people date for the purpose of having sex, or in other words, promiscuity. It just presents us with the same issues it always has. People hiding what they really want out of trying to hold on to a connection with someone. High rates of sexually transmitted disease mental and emotional abuse, and a general lack of respect for, meaning not being considerate for your partner's life outside of their sexual side, and issues with self-esteem. Some women mistakenly think that they are liberating themselves or owning their sexuality by participating in hookup culture when they are actually just giving men or anyone else who is only looking for sex more of what they want. I used to teach a course on sexuality, and I can tell you from personal experience as well that you don't have to have lots of sex or have it with many partners to be free or to own your sexuality. There is a hell of a lot more freedom in using your body in safe and meaningful ways rather than giving it out to anyone who wants it. Owning our sexuality means making informed and educated choices about what we do with it. It's not just being victims of our own or someone else's desires. We are not animals who lack the ability of discernment when it comes to sex. There is nothing wrong with sex, but there is something wrong when we don't use our intelligence in regard to sex. Sex positivity is about understanding that and using that knowledge to build healthy sexual relationships for ourselves. And calling out all of this is not slut-shaming. It's about being realistic and encouraging women to make the very best decisions for themselves. But dating isn't just about sex, is it? Believe me, I talk to lots of women who are in so-called dating situations where they are compromising their own desires just to make their partners happy. Whether it's participating in open relationships or keeping things casual by not committing or seeing other people getting involved with someone who is married, or simply just hooking up. Now, don't get it twisted. I talk to many men in the same unsatisfactory situations, but this podcast is for women. We may be in the year 2023, but people and their deepest desires do not change over time. It is still and always will be important for people to experience intimacy and to be loved. 
We need to be close to people, to have loving exchanges with them, to feel mentally and emotionally happy. Now, of course, that doesn't have to be with a romantic partner, nor does it necessarily involve sex, but it is what many people are looking for when they date. I cannot tell you the number of people, both women and men, who I have spoken to who try to accept sharing a partner or getting less from a partner in an attempt not to lose them, even though they are completely dissatisfied. Why is anyone trying to hold on to a relationship that makes them miserable? That is rhetorical, of course. There are many reasons why we do this. There are children involved, or people think that they will be lonely, as if that's worse than being miserable. They are in an abusive situation, which is complicated and requires specific processes to get out of. There are many reasons why we stay in bad situations. But there are even more reasons why, if we cannot make a relationship better, then we would do ourselves a favor and the person we are involved with by getting out of that relationship. So say we get out of a bad situation and we start to date. Before we can start a healthy relationship with anyone, we need to heal from the trauma of the relationship we just left. Otherwise, we carry the negativity from it into a new situation and the same problems come up again. Now, again, I'll mention, thanks to technology, it is sometimes hard to let go of a past relationship. There are plenty of opportunities to watch what a past partner is doing or who they are seeing. People stalk their past partners, causing themselves to suffer over and over again. Block them or do whatever you have to do not to see their activities. So say we finally heal or are at least in a healthier position to meet someone new. And voila, we get a message from someone on an app. We text them and maybe even talk to them for hours and hours. But if we don't meet them and really see what they are about, then we don't know them. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you have found the person of your dreams or have fallen madly in love with someone that you don't even know. We can project whatever we want onto a photo or reading messages that say what we want them to say or even hearing a voice that we've gotten used to hearing over time. But spending quality time with someone shows us exactly who they are. And though we may still project onto them, it becomes harder to do so when we see them in action again and again. Speaking of projections, say we meet someone and though there are things about them that we have a very hard time with, we somehow expect that they will change. Or better yet, that we will change them. If you are in this situation, please give it up. People only change with a lot of deep introspective work, and we cannot change anyone no matter how hard we try. Human beings are responsible for changing ourselves, and no one can do that for us. If we are entering into a relationship expecting change, then something is clearly wrong. 
why would we get into a relationship that from the very beginning is not suitable for us? Again, that's rhetorical. Don't answer. (laughs) Open relationships are usually a clue that your relationship will soon be over. There are couples who stay in open relationships for one reason or another. More often than not, one partner is not happy with the situation, but stays because they are attached to certain things about their mate. It's similar with people who say they are in a casual relationship where they are not committing to being monogamous or they are seeing each other when it's convenient. Often that turns into one partner being jealous of seeing the other partner with someone else. Then there's the nonsense of hooking up. Let's talk about safe sex or low self-esteem. Someone willing to be in this situation screams of desperation, which is something that cannot be remedied by hooking up. Yes, there are people who are just looking for sex, but this is not the podcast episode for those people. Of course, some people have higher sexual drives than others, and there are ways to deal with that that do not involve using other people as sex toys for masturbation. When you share your energy and your body with someone in that way, you are taking on their energy and creating an intimate space with them without integrity, which is never an ideal situation. And then we come to those who are dating someone who is married. 9.5 times out of 10, this will not have a happy ending. No matter what someone tells you about how unhappy they are in their marriage, the thought of leaving that marriage to be with someone else is usually just a fantasy. Furthermore, the saying, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free, may be very, very old-fashioned, but it is certainly appropriate. If you are willing to give your time, energy, and body to someone who has already made major commitments to someone else, Why would they ever change the situation? Don't worry, that's also rhetorical. A divorce is not an easy thing. No, let me be more precise. A divorce is an oozing, gaping black hole in the mind of someone who is married. They will try to avoid it as much as possible for as long as possible because they are aware of the repercussions. It will be hell. Even if you know that you will be okay once it's all over, the thought of going through it is terrifying. People immediately start to think about what they will lose in the process, and you know how scary that is for most people. But if you have someone on the side who is willing to sneak around with you so you can try to have all the cake you want and eat it too, Why put yourself through the nightmare of a divorce? People want it all, especially when it comes to affairs of passion. You deserve better than being strung along by someone who may fantasize about leaving their marriage to be with you, but in reality will avoid it at any cost. And what if they do miraculously leave their marriage for you? 
Will you be able to trust that they won't someday do the same to you? Will you be able to respect them for making a commitment to someone, then leaving it when things got tough? Just some things to actually think about. Passion is a powerful, powerful thing. And if we let it guide our lives, we will live on a never ending roller coaster. I know I have already done an episode for single women, but I just want to remind you that you do not have to date. So get your head out of that romance novel and get on with your life. Just by living your life and exploring the things that are important to you, you increase your chances of meeting someone who you have important things in common with. Now, I am absolutely not saying that you should go out and do important things just to meet someone. No, no, this is not about dating advice. In fact, let's go on that tangent. Please stop listening to dating advice. You will meet the right partner when the time is right which is not always when you want it to be. You don't have to pretend you're someone you're not. You don't have to dress a certain way or do your hair a certain way. You don't have to take up hobbies that you have no interest in or whatever else dating advice is espousing these days. Life is not a dating app. We cannot swipe through people and pretend that they are right for us. We can live our lives being our true selves. And if we want to be with someone, we will be attracted to them and they will be attracted to who we truly are. Meeting the right partner is not a game. And there are no rules that apply to everyone. We cannot waste our lives waiting for a partner to come along. Our lives are about so much more than being in romantic relationships. If we put all of our energy into that one endeavor, we will neglect other more important parts of our lives. Just the other day, I had a client say to me that he was tired of waiting for someone. And I almost replied, then why are you waiting? Of course, I knew he was coming from a place of frustration, so I held in that first thought. The problem for him and many other people is that they have unrealistic expectations that have been exacerbated by this new way that people think of dating. Dating apps have given people the impression that we should just be able to pick up our phones, pick out a profile, and order up a relationship. Even if that were possible, what would we do with that relationship? 
People are so confused about what it means to be in a relationship or even how to go about maintaining a relationship that even if they had one, it wouldn't last for long anyway. Why not take our time, do our healing, and learn about relationships before we are in the midst of one? So many people get their relationship degrees from Disney or Hollywood, which makes them experts in unrealistic expectations. Healthy relationships take qualities like maturity, compassion, patience, and a willingness to compromise some of our desires. Qualities that seem to be lacking in our society today. So how could we possibly have healthy relationships when we are missing the tools to do so? Rather than looking for the one or the perfect partner, why aren't we looking for ways to make ourselves healthier? If more people worked on that, there would be more people for all of us to date. (laughs) And what exactly do you think having a partner is going to do for you? I often get the impression that many women think that if they just had a partner, their lives would be perfect, that they wouldn't be lonely, or that they would be happier. Well, there are plenty of lonely people in couples, and Lord knows there are unhappy ones too. But somehow, people think that they will be different. The mythical, magical, perfect couple that never has any problems and is always happy. Being in a couple can be beautiful. It can give us an opportunity to exchange love with someone. It can challenge us to be better people. But it is not a special enchantment to make our problems go away. We don't live in a society that teaches us practical things about how to be in a relationship. Things such as appropriate expectations, conflict resolution, good communication, emotional maturity, and stability. Things that would help us have successful relationships. However, instead of swiping our days away or pining over someone we cannot be with, we could take a relationship course or a workshop. We could go to a relationship coach. We could talk to a psychologist. We could read books about healthy relationships or even have heart-to-heart talks with real friends who are already in relationships. There are so many things that we can do to ensure that we have realistic expectations and a clear understanding of what we are really asking for and that we will be ready if and when a relationship comes. When it does, that won't be the end of our work. There will be tough times and there will be good times, and we will have to adapt to them both. We may have to take more courses, talk to another psychologist, or read more books. But after all the time we've spent living and exploring for ourselves, when we meet a partner that we decide we want to share our lives with, we want to do it right.
So, woman, you know what time it is, right? <laughs> it is time for our weekly tarot card reading. And so, our query today will be about dating, right? I mean, that's what the, the rest of the episode was about. <laughs> so, yes, we're looking at dating, and our query is about... Huh, let's see. So I'm sorry, all of these things are going through my mind. I'm thinking about what people often ask um, when I work with them, things like when will I meet my partner or things like that. But I would rather ask something more affirming and um, more uh, beneficial to all of us. So the question I'm going to ask in this tarot reading is... Um, what do we need to do to prepare ourselves to um, find the right relationship? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to say date because I don't know dating. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna leave it at that. What do we need to do to prepare ourselves? to find the right relationship. You know, we can date all day long. We can date for the rest of our lives. But what is the purpose of our dating? So, yeah, that's our query. And I am being told... I'm sorry, my cat was distracting me because he's <laughs> being naughty. Okay, so I am being told that... Um, I need to lay out six cards. Okay, six cards today. So let's see, what do we have? There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, okay. So as I look at these cards, wow, they look very serious. <laughs> yes, these cards are... Um, yeah, they're not messing around. All right, so let's get into this. So our first card of this reading is the Knight of Swords. And the Knight of Swords is telling me in this reading that in order to um, prepare ourselves for the right relationship, we have to move with determination. Meaning that it's not being determined that we're going to find someone and we're going to do everything that we have to do or everything that we can do to meet them. We'll get on all the apps and we'll talk to all our friends and ask them if they know someone to set us up with or all. No, it's not about that. Moving with determination in this instance means that what we will do is that we will do the things that we need to do to make ourselves healthier, happier people. Because if we are already healthy and happy, beautiful women, <laughs> because if we're healthy and happy inside, then we're naturally beautiful. So not only will we do um, everything within our power to heal, to make ourselves happier and healthier women, that will automatically put us in the position of being ready to accept, accept someone who is on that same level, someone else who is also healthy and happy. And the other lovely thing about this is that it will prevent us from getting into situations that are not healthy for ourselves or for the other person involved. So once we are healthy and happy, we automatically put ourselves in the position, in an ideal position that prepares us to accept someone into our lives, should we choose to do that, um, who's also healthy and happy, and it also gives us an extra layer of protection, um, prevents us from wasting our time. Okay, so the next card in our reading is the Knight of Cups. 
Um, and this is another, like I said, these cards are so serious. Like they have very distinct meanings in this reading. So this particular card is telling us that to prepare ourselves to um, be in the right relationship, what we should do is to come uh, with humility. Humility is always such an important and underrated quality because people don't even know what it really means. It's such a misunderstood quality. And humility is one of the most beautiful things that we can express. It is one of the most beautiful things that we can cultivate for ourselves. And to prepare ourselves to get into a healthy relationship is we have to let go of that ego, that false, false ego that gives us all of these ridiculous messages about what we want and who we think we are and all of that. Well, no, that's not helpful in a relationship. The last thing you want to take into a relationship that's important to you, a relationship where you're trying to build love and trust, is ego. You don't want to take ego into your relationship. It's counterproductive. It's actually dangerous to do so. So we want to go into, we want to prepare ourselves in humility. And not only are we coming into this situation, coming at it with humility, but we're also bringing along with us the wealth of all of the wisdom that we have learned. Remember, relationships are important. They're an important step in our lives. They should not be taken lightly. And once we get into them, we want them to succeed, right? We're not getting into relationships for them to end. I mean, yes, many relationships have their, their kind of shelf life. Um, they're not all going to last forever. But when you get into a, com a committed, excuse me, a committed and um, sometimes romantic relationship, you're, you want it to last. You're serious about what you're doing. You know, we're mature, compassionate, um, you know, loving people here. We're not, we're not farting around with this whole thing. So we're, again, taking that wealth of knowledge, all of that knowledge that we have acquired from, from living our lives and exploring the world and exploring everything that is important to us, everything that, um, you know, has meaning and that will bring us healing and, and all of the things, all of this work that we have done to make ourselves happy, to educate ourselves, to spiritualize ourselves, whatever we have done, we're taking that wealth of what we have gained from all of our life experiences and we're taking it into our relationships in a humble way. We're not stepping in again out of ego and, you know, um, coming in and, and looking for what we can get in the relationship or how we can control the relationship or control our partners. No, it's not about that. It is totally about coming in with humility and carrying that wisdom, bringing it forth in a humble way and with the, with the knowledge that we can use that to help ourselves have healthy, happy relationships. Okay, so the next card that comes to us is the Eight of Cups. And this card is really lovely. Um, it's, it's coming to us in a very spiritual way. Um, what this card is telling us in this reading is that when we get into this important, meaningful, loving <laughs> relationship that we finally get into is that it is important to appreciate it, to express our love, to um, receive love as well. 
However, the other important thing to remember is that we do not want to let ourselves get attached. Um, I've talked about um, before in other episodes of Woman on Her Path that there is a distinct difference between love and attachment. They can both exist at the same time, but um, love is what we want in our relationships. Attachment is not a healthy thing. When we are feeling attachment to someone, that usually means that we are seeking what we can get from them or, you know, what we can have them do, how we can control them or how they can feed our ego. But when we love someone and when we're um, having that love reciprocated, when we're in a healthy relationship where we're exchanging love, then what's happening is we are recognizing that this person is not our property. They do not belong to us. We are recognizing that we are in a relationship um, with equal partners. We both have a stake in our relationship. However, we don't want to be attached. We don't want to um, put ourselves in a position where we are holding on to the relationship, not out of love, but out of how this relationship can serve us. Never a healthy way to have a relationship. So even though we're in this wonderful, loving um, experience, this wonderful, loving relationship with someone, if we love them without attachment, then we will be able to move away from that relationship should the time come. Does it mean that it will? I mean, actually, ultimately, yes, it will, because none of us are going to be here in, a, in our current lifetimes forever. But should the time come when our relationship um, has come to an end, we have grown apart, um, we have grown in different uh, directions or in different ways, um, you know, the relationship isn't, isn't keeping up with the progress that we have made as individuals, then it may be time to move on. And when that time comes, if we truly love that person, we will want them to be happy and we will not, um, you know, hold on to things that are not healthy for us to hold on to. So I could say so much more about that because this card is really speaking, but we have, I think that those are the main points and we have three more cards to get to today. So the next card is the seven of pentacles. And this card is telling me that in order to prepare ourselves for a relationship, we have to mentally and emotionally prepare ourselves. We have to dig deep inside of ourselves and be ready to grow something, to grow our relationship, to build a relationship, understanding that it takes time for things to grow. And in order for things to grow, they need sunlight, they need fertilizer, they need water, we have to tend them. They don't just, you know, of course, many plants just grow by themselves. But when it comes to relationships, of course, in the beginning, you meet someone, you're attracted, everything seems to go well, you know, everybody seems to be happy. But then over time, uh, familiarity comes about, you know, you start to um, get, you know, familiar, comfortable with one another, you know, you start, you stop um, that, that kind of glow, that, you know, honeymoon glow starts to fade away. And then it's time to um, 
really cultivate things. It's time for the real work. And when that time comes, we need to be prepared for that. Again, it's not about, you know, this Hollywood or Disney, I'm going to meet my prince or I'm going to meet my princess and everything's going to be beautiful. No, it's about meeting someone, getting into your relationship and then understanding that We have to do the work and it doesn't have to be grueling. It doesn't have to be, you know, terrible and exhausting. No, but we have to tend it. We have to take care of it. You know, two people come into a relationship and then the relationship becomes its own entity. And that entity needs to be cultivated. It needs to be loved. It needs to be nurtured. And so we have to be prepared to do that. Again, it's not about going into a relationship with unrealistic expectations or, you know, having some fantasy about what it's going to be like. We have to know that we will have to feed our relationship. We will have to water our relationship. We will have to give our relationship lots and lots of sunlight. So that is the seven of pentacles. The next card that comes about for us is the two of cups. And um, <laughs> this, uh, this card is wonderful. It's just, it's just, you know, gently speaking, beautiful, beautiful words. And so um, this card is about, Again, to prepare ourselves uh, for a relationship, it is telling me that we need to come to know that we will come together with someone. And when we do, we want to have the right intentions. Again, it's hearkening back to the last card about, um, you know, knowing that we will have to do the work. But this is also about understanding that we need to have healthy intentions, that we want to come together as equal partners with healthy ideas about how to have a relationship, how to be in relationship. And as I mentioned in the last segment, there are so many things that we can do to prepare ourselves, but mentally and emotionally, it's so important to come into it with pure intentions and pure desires. It's not about what can I get for myself. It's not about how can I control this person. It's not about how can this person feed my ego or make me look better. It is about having pure intentions to have um, an even exchange with someone, a loving exchange with someone. And of course, in every relationship, there are times when we have to do a little more work than our partner. And then there are times when they have to do a little more work than us. But that's the compromise. That's what keeps things in balance. When one partner understands that fact that it's not always going to be, you know, my ideal relationship. Once we come in understanding that, then we're not so thrown off track or devastated when something happens in a relationship that's unexpected or that may be even undesirable. You know, there are many, many Um, difficult, difficult things, sometimes even things that are, um, that may seem horrendous when they first come about. Knowing that we have the tools to help us heal and get through difficult times is so important. We have to have faith in our ability and our partner's ability to be able to get past those difficult or even painful things. And finally, our last card of this reading is the Six of Pentacles. And the Six of Pentacles is is telling us, 
Oh, I'm telling these. I'm sorry. This whole reading, like each of these cards, has been really, really solid, and it's just beautiful. I love, I love the, when, when I get a reading like this. But getting back to this card, this Six of Pentacles is is reminding us that um, it's almost kind of like a roundup of everything that all of the other cards have said. But in addition to what all of the cards have told us about keeping things in balance and, you know, humility, it's also understanding that... Um, there that relationships when they come to us and we tend them in a healthy way and we come into it with realistic expectations that they are gifts and that we have to treat them that way like all relationships not just romantic relationships but relationships with family members relationships with friends relationships with other people in our lives that they are ultimately gifts to us um, from places much greater than we can um, always source from they are gifts to us and we have to value them you know, again, it's not about getting into relationships and finding out what we can get or take from them. It's about being humble and understanding that we value this connection that we have with this other person and we treat it in a way that shows that, you know, we treat it with respect, we treat it with honor, we treat it as this precious thing, this precious opportunity that we have been given. And knowing and in order to do that, we have to come into it already prepared to do all of the things <laughs> that I have just read in all of the other cards. I'm not going to rehash them already, but we have to be prepared. You know, we can't take things for granted. We have to be ready to do the work. And we have to value because when we value things, we take care of them. They have meaning to us and we tend them with love and with joy. So that is our reading for today. In fact, it's our reading for the week. So I hope that it was helpful for you. Woman, we have come to the conclusion of another episode of Woman on Her Path. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that this um, episode was helpful for you. I hope that you found something of value in this episode. And as I mentioned at the very beginning, please feel free to reach out to me, share whatever you'd like to share. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and ask your questions and know that I appreciate you tuning in and I can't wait to connect with you next time, either next week or a month from now. <laughs> bye bye thank you so much for listening to this show I hope you found something useful like everything in life we can take what we need and leave the rest please feel free to contact me with comments or questions at womanonherpath at gmail.com